the day, Baby Fat was a major influence on feminine hip hop fashion. And for almost a decade, it felt like Baby Fat had completely disappeared. This is how Kamora Lee Simmons helped to make streetwear mainstream and made Baby Fat one of the most iconic symbols of the 2000s. Kamora Lee is a very close friend of mine, and um, so is Russell. I love to be involved in fashion and help people get their fashion across. Well, I've been knowing Russell and Kamora Lee for quite some time. They're like my children. And like, I convinced her to make fake fur, and she was laughing at me, and she didn't like know that it was such great evolutionary fur. We do this thing, it's called um, evolutionary fur, which is fur free. So it's a little more of a nicer way to go. It's more, you know, humane. I think the baby fat is an aspirational lifestyle brand. I see everything that we as girls need in our life to do what we gotta do with these guys, with our jobs, with whatever. So I hope to give that to the women in a sexy, affordable way. <laughs> Kamora Lee Perkins was born on May 4th, 1975 in St. Louis, Missouri. Her mother is of Japanese and Korean descent while her father is African American. Kamora grew up in the suburbs of St. Louis and was targeted by bullies because of her height and mixed ancestry. By the time she was 10, she was already 5 feet 10 inches. Her mother enrolled her in a modeling class when she was 11 to give her more confidence and by 13, she was discovered by an agent from Paris Agency Glamour at a model search in Kansas City. She was immediately sent to Paris, and at the age of 14, she signed an exclusive modeling contract with Chanel. She quickly gained attention in the fashion world when she closed Karl Lagerfeld's Haute Couture show in 1989, and would go on to model for Fendi, YSL, Valentino, you name it. Magic. It has to be home by midnight or else. Cinderella in real life is Kimora Perkins, a 15-year-old high school student. She lives in St. Louis, but the world is her pumpkin, and she shares it with us in today's Inside Story. She's only 15 years old and is the toast of the international high fashion world. And this gorgeous six-foot-tall model leads a double life. Part of the time, she's that real-life Cinderella who dresses up for the ball. But back home in St. Louis, Missouri, she's 10th grade student Kimora Perkins. The gorgeous gowns, and it, oh, it's, you know, it's easy to get wrapped up in it. But, but no, it didn't overtake me because I knew I still had to get, take off the gown and come home and go back to school. So it was easy to keep my feet on the ground. Kimora spends 12 weeks out of the school year away from home working in Europe and New York for the likes of Chanel and Yves Saint Laurent. Although she won't turn 16 until next May, she's remarkably mature and says that she's able to keep her distance from the darker undersides of her seemingly glamorous profession. People get caught up on mental and psychological trips and they get into things like drugs and alcohol and they're dating people to get certain places. And some people get really confused as to why they're there. There's a lot of things like that going on. Do this, this will make you better, this will make you prettier, this will make you feel good, and when you're stressed out, drink this, this will make you feel, oh God, you have to really watch out for that. The wild and sensual nightlife of Paris might be tempting to a young teenaged girl from the heart of the American Midwest, St. Louis, but Kimora says that she's been able to steer clear of older men who can be considered model groupies. They don't know how old I am when they approach me. I'm not a 19-year-old, 21-year-old person. And I have men that are 40 years old that want to take me out to dinner. And it's, it's just not something that I need to be seen even in right now. Kimura is of Korean, Japanese, and African-American descent. Her career began when she was discovered by a European modeling agent when she was 13 and flown off to France. When she's in Paris, she lives alone in her own apartment because her mother has a job and cannot travel with her. And this 15-year-old earns up to $450 an hour. Angle one, and angle two are right, angle right. But when she's home in St. Louis, she's just like any other high school sophomore, except that she says some of her schoolmates don't quite understand what she does. A lot of kids are jealous of me and they're envious of me, but it may not be because they um, want to do what I'm doing or something like that, or they want what I have. It's more like they don't understand what I'm doing. Kimora was raised as an only child in a single-parent home. Hip-hop culture finally became mainstream in the 1990s. 
Rappers wore and promoted non-black owned brands like Kooji and Tommy Hilfiger until they started launching their own clothing brands like Sean John, Rockaware, and FUBU. At the age of 17, Kamara met Russell Simmons at New York's Fashion Week in 1992. Russell, who was 35 at the time, was a record producer, co-founder of Def Jam, and founder of Fat Fashions LLC using Fat Farm, his hip-hop fashion label. The couple got married in 1998 and Kamara developed Baby Fat as an extension of Fat Farm under Fat Fashions LLC in 1999. The brand was geared towards women of color, while other urban brands were geared towards the men. And because of Russell's connections to the hip-hop community, Baby Fat was able to attract attention from Lil' Kim, Naomi Campbell, Alicia Keys, and more black A-listers. Print is sexy, and I think that's what's hot about it. I'm here to support uh, Kamora and Russell Simmons, introducing Baby Fat or uh, the lingerie line. I'm here to see some pretty women, you know. When celebrities and supermodels began sporting the new tiny t-shirts, the demand for these hot baby tees increased. Baby Fat was black women's very own high fashion line. Soon the brand would be the standard for women's fashion, appearing in television shows and being mentioned in songs. The brand was accessible with prices that fell on both the affordable and high-end spectrums. Baby Fat constantly celebrated black culture and helped urban wear become mainstream by merging hip-hop with high fashion with bold, ambitious, and feminine styles. Kimura was often shut out of the fashion industry because Baby Fat didn't cater to the rich white consumers like other brands did. She was the first designer to have a fashion show at New York's Radio City Music Hall. Her shows brought out the likes of Aaliyah, Jay-Z, Diddy, and Mary J. Blige. Baby fat, young, fly, stylish to shit. I need some baby fat, Kamara. I love Kamara, I love baby fat, I love the style, I love how it's funky and sexy and still really fashion forward, you know, it's, it's everything that a clothing line needs. She knows how to dress women, and she really accentuates the female form so well. So uh, I, it's, it's all fun as hell. And very sexy. Well, Kamara herself is exceptionally sexy. I would imagine the people that follow me have a passion for fashion, which is what I'm about. I'm about passion and fashion. In a 2016 interview with Fader, when asked her opinion about other demographics adopting the urban style, Kamara said, I was paying homage to the feminine form, body, and shape, and the references that I was using, the materials and the finishings, the metals, and so on and so forth. The sizes of the logo, the placement of the logo, they were really big, and they're looking really big nowadays too. Who would have thought ever that Ralph Lauren would have a logo on the chest that is the size of the palm of your hand? There was a time that someone would have mistakenly called that ghetto, but at that time would have been a negative connotation. So all I'm saying is to me, whatever it is labeled is not negative. Even though you may have seen that in the ghetto, you never would have said, oh, Ralph Lauren is ghetto. Even now, for these other brands that are higher end, the logos are huge and so are the sizes of the zippers, the earrings, and the stitch. I call it retro. But what I was doing back then was something that was true to myself because that's where I was from. I didn't want to be called urban because I didn't understand what made me urban and let's say Tommy Hilfiger not. People in the fashion industry might call it that but they would not have said it then. To me it was only called that because of the color of the people working there and I thought that was some real racist sh So back then I was fighting the fight because I wanted to be included. It was fashion. Kimura always casted diverse models and made black and brown women the face of her glamorous campaigns during a time when diversity was still an issue in the fashion industry. And today, it is still an issue in the fashion industry. Can you believe that? She regularly appeared in campaigns with her daughters Ming and Aoki Lee at a time when it was rare for designers to be the face of their own campaigns. In 2004, Russell Simmons sold Fat Fashions to Kelwood Company. Russell remained president of Fat Fashions and Kimora continued to work as the president and creative director of Baby Fat. 
The sale was intended to fund an expansion to drive more promotional deals and build more stores. In October of 2004, Babyfat announced their deal with Motorola. Kamara created a limited edition mobile phone with pink quilted texture with the Babyfat logo and 0.4 carats of genuine diamonds encrusting the external display. The phone was retailed at $699 and was sold exclusively at Bloomingdale's. She said, I designed this phone for the woman like me who loves pink, loves diamonds, and wants to make a fashion statement. Kamara had even released a baby fat prepaid Rush Visa card. She would go on to expand the brand to lingerie and kids accessories and became one of the first African American women to lead a billion dollar company. She even partnered with Cody and released baby fat fragrances. She started documenting her life as a CEO, mother, and designer on her own show on Style Network. Person, I have issues and kids and family and jobs to juggle and balance. She's a model. Want to eat something? I can't. I'm on a diet. What do you propose I eat? She's a mom. <laughs> you put that jewelry in that oatmeal? I'm not quite a soccer mom. And she's a mogul. Who said the meeting was at 4 o'clock? I'd like to know so I can fire them. Don't play with me. The Style Network takes us on an in-depth journey of the crazy life of this ghetto fabulous diva. I have parties to go to, events to plan, sweetie. By 2007, Baby Fat was being sold in department stores and was producing interior items with the intent to expand to more lifestyle products. In 2008, Kelwood sold a majority stake to Sun Capital Partners after sales declined during the recession, which led to Kimura resigning. She would then launch her KLS brand that was sold exclusively at Macy's. In 2019, Kamara announced that she bought back Baby Fat with plans to relaunch the brand and reclaim the black and urban aesthetic. Yes, so um, as a part, of, I'm excited to, to actually announce this on International Women's Day, but I have a brand, it's called Baby Fat, Baby we Fat by Kamara Lee Simmons that I started 20 something years ago. Um, and I've recently just purchased that uh, company back. And so I'll be relaunching that and rolling that out um, this year. And for many people who who know me and know of my start, then they remember that it's always been kind of a family journey for me. And I have two little girls, Ming and Aoki. I also have two young boys, Kenzo and Wolf. But Ming and Aoki, they kind of know from the show and from always being with me in the atelier and in the design room and going down the runway. So now they're older, 16 and 19, um, and they will be helping me, helping me with the rain, so to speak, helping me at the helm. The brand made its comeback in June of 2019 with Forever 21. And while people were excited, there was a lot of backlash and concerns about Forever 21's price point possibly lowering the quality of Baby Fat's products. So far, it's way too early to pass judgment about the relaunch, and we will be watching closely to see what the new Baby Fat has to offer. But for now, we should just focus on what's important. Regardless of what the relaunch brings, the 2000s aesthetic has been making a comeback and we cannot deny that Kamora Lee Simmons and Baby Fat are the most iconic figures of 2000s fashion. Kamora created her own lane in the fashion industry and helped the careers of models of color and celebrated curvy women before everyone else did. The aesthetic that Kamora created is now being sold by Insta brands like Fashion Nova or by high fashion brand designers like Alexander Wang and Rick Owens. Kamara says, yeah, I feel like they never would authentically credit urban streetwear or certainly never credit black culture or minority culture for these trends. Now they're doing the baggy silhouettes, the layering of pieces, all of the Afrocentric hairstyles like a real Afro. Now you're seeing it on the runway. You'll see dreads, big braids, and on and on with the makeup trends. You'll see braids on some celebrity and it's like, oh, they started that trend. No, they really didn't. It's very important to keep the dialogue about this alive. It's not going anywhere. It may change how it looks and what it takes to do so, but you'll never be able to steal that beauty, those ideals, and where those things came from. No one will ever be able to steal that. How far will you go to be able to get away with that? You won't be able to get away with that. That's within us. You can check it time and time again, and it's ours. So yes, a little credit is due. 
Hopefully we see more black designers relaunching their brands and reclaiming the culture that we created. Kamara says, Baby Fat will be woman owned, woman led, and as always, designed by and for women. Kamora Lee Simmons will forever be the symbol of the working successful mother that we all aspire to be. Or at least what I aspire to be. She's a real self-made billionaire. Where would fashion be without Kamora Lee Simmons? Go ahead and let me know your thoughts in the comments and what other brands would you like to see make a comeback? Make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content.